I'm Anil Kakurkar. I was uh, chairman of Atomic Energy Commission in India during 2000 to 2009, nine years. Uh, my primary interest is uh, nuclear reactors. That's what I spent uh, my lifetime on. And in that, of course, thorium uh, has been of special interest for the Indian program. So I was uh, involved in thorium right since uh, the day I entered atomic energy. Uh, so it was uh, in the context of, uh, for example, carrying out studies with thorium, uh, carrying out uh, or looking at thorium for purpose of power flattening in PHWRs as the startup, so that you can get full power right from day one uh, and then of course setting up facilities for uh, sort of getting uranium-233 out of those irradiated uh, bundles or some physics studies and there is a whole group uh, that, that did this work. Uh, then uh, after uh, we finished uh, the Dhruva reactor which was a research reactor. Uh, we actually conceived this advanced heavy water reactor and uh, as I said in my presentation there, uh, this uh, was the time just after Chernobyl and Bark uh, being uh, a place for development of new reactor systems, we said okay we finished Dhruva, now let's see what better and we put the right thing is to address this issue of public concern by way of design of a reactor which is based on present day technology but configured innovatively so that it can address this issue of uh, uh, you know the, the, the huge trauma that takes place following consequence in public domain. So we said we should have a reactor which will not lead to any consequence in public domain. And uh, that's what HWR is about. And we, since we have interest in thorium, and since we all know that thorium has several properties which can be leveraged to enhance safety, we said we'll make it uh, a thorium-based reactor. So some energy will come out of thorium, which will allow us to enhance our experience with thorium on a larger scale. So, so that's what I did. Now, of course, I'm. I have retired since 2009, so I have moved on to so do bigger things and more things. So I, I focus, of course I continue my interest in thorium, I got in solar energy, I was the chairman of the, founder chairman of the Solar Energy Corporation, which is a government company uh, to promote solar energy. Uh, of course I am attached with BARC, so I continue working here. In nuclear energy. But I do a lot of work in education and also a lot of work in rural societal development based on science and technology. So my plate is full. The, the thing is like this, uh, the, the, in nature the only fissile material that exists is uranium-235. And so all nuclear program has to begin with uranium. Now, uh, if you ask a question that I have given amount of fissile material, separated fissile material, and whether I should use it with uranium, meaning uranium-238, or thorium. If you had asked this question at times when nuclear energy began, the answer would be, uranium because you couldn't take fuel to a very high burn up. So you know the in situ generation of uranium 233 doesn't make much contribution if you're not residing in the core for long enough time. Today the technology permits uh, taking fuel to a very high burn up. So if you ask the same question today, the answer is thorium. Now it's just historic that the development of fuel has to take place step by step. 
so people use low burner fuels in earlier times now they use high burner but supposing hypothetically you could use high burn up on day 1 and you separate the fissile material from uranium and then ask question now i have choices what do i do the answer is clear so it so it makes sense now in addition uh, of course for india thorium is important because we don't have too much of uranium and so we are basing everything with thorium as our long term goal uh, but even worldwide so many of the problems which world faces in the context of nuclear energy uh, for example there is this proliferation concern uh, and so as a result countries are not resorting to reprocessing so the spent fuel is just accumulating and nobody knows what to do with that spent uh, if thorium is in picture this issue doesn't arise because then people would be comfortable carrying out the process of course it's a different technology it has difficulty you need to develop that technology but all that is doable as indian experience has shown and and so you don't have so much of concern on proliferation on safety now thorium uh, see thorium conductivity is better chemical stability is higher dimensional stability is higher fission gas retention is better so for the same performance requirement a thorium fuel will run relatively cooler thorium fuel uh, will remain uh, kind of safer in terms of you know it's uh, say chemical attack and things like that and uh, even if it comes to final disposition the thorium matrix is very stable so it will hold it fission gas it will allow it so it has lot of such advantages which can all be leveraged and there is realization now worldwide for example there are many countries here at this conference uh, who recognize thorium to be an important energy source but they also recognize that maybe today there are many other energy alternatives available so why worry about this new technology but they think it is important because it can solve many other problems for example proliferation concern safety sustainability so on and so forth those two and another certainly now see the question is uh solar energy can be used in a decentralized fashion you can also use in a centralized fashion now and there is uh, for example if i get uh, electricity from the grid but i also set up uh, my own solar installation and uh, then i can i can adjust if i am generating excess i can pump it back into the grid or uh, if i need more then i can use solar as well as uh, electricity from from outside uh, now uh, so this is at the individual level uh, seen from a broader term there is actually a lot of complementarity between solar energy and thorium uh, sun uh, first of all solar energy is also abundant uh, in in india uh, we are blessed with lot of sunshine and uh, you know no country should uh, put all eggs in the same basket so for us thorium may be plenty but you can't do everything on thorium so even on that logic uh, solar comes out very important but the complementarity is that uh, solar energy is decentralized thorium energy can be centralized uh, 24 by 7 you can set up large plants to feed industry solar energy of course you can set large plant but it requires a lot of land mass and uh, such land mass finding near population will come to create a conflict between land use you uh, could locate this in remote areas but then it has its own problem so uh, the point is there is this complementarity between the two and of course you need an energy mix you can put all it in the same basket so i think the two should go on 
first point is India requires energy at any cost. So, uh, for example, uh, see other countries, you know, advanced countries, the per capita consumption is kind of stable, population is stable, so total energy is more or less stable. India, actually both are growing. The requirement of per capita energy is, is growing. In fact, it may go up six, seven times what it is now, or even more. Uh, and population also marginally growing. Grow. So India's energy requirements are large. So we must get energy come what This is number one. Now, in that, if you see long-term uh, energy resources, large resources which will, uh, which will be sufficient in the long, long term, uh, in fact, it is thorium and solar, which, has, which are non-fossil, clean energy. So for us, I think it's a natural choice to move. The problem is we are not there right now. And so today we are dependent on conventional sources and we have to make, make that transition. Uh, and that's what the thrust of the government is. So they have said uh, uh, that uh, they will aim at between 33 to 35 percent uh, reduction in, uh, in the emission efficiency of GDP. And uh, they have said that they will uh, reach 40 percent of the total installed capacity. Uh, coming from non-fossil sources and uh, I think this is doable. I see no issue, absolutely no issue. I think uh, to me the most important thing is because you know this large scale deployment, uh, well first of all it should be based on the uh, energy resources from within the country, this will happen, thorium and solar. But we should also do value addition within the country because otherwise a lot of money will go out, so it will affect balance of payment. And so I would like to see a lot of so-called Prime Ministers make in India campaign. So a lot of things. In nuclear we do most of value addition in the country. But even in solar I would like to see maximum value addition in the country including production of silicon or other photovoltaic material and processing it and assembling the panel. Or for that matter, solar thermal if you want to. And, uh, and that's what we are working on. I'm actually working on a development project to set up a, uh, a solar thermal demonstration plant in multi-megawatt scale. So, so people often uh, wonder what, whether I'm a thorium man or a solar man and I say I'm both. Two parts. Of course, I, I speak to people a lot. I have addressed plenty of such meetings. Uh, now, we talk to them in simple language, slowly, have enough time to address their questions. I think they understand. There is another side to this. You know, people have to develop confidence. Take the example of uh, air travel. How many people understand how an aeroplane flies? But they travel because they have confidence. I know in my childhood if I go to airport and people buy air ticket or check-in, next will be there will be an air insurance counter on the opposite side. Notwithstanding that the airline already insures you, but they will buy a separate insurance. That was the fear. Today, that case is not there. So, nuclear, I think, uh, once people see that there are far more benefits than the risks, they will come to accept. Now, but I think uh, it should happen in a manner that uh, the, the proponents and people, they, they see each other as, as one, not on people on the opposite side of the table, but part of the same. So it has to, they, you have to build in a certain degree of credibility, self, you know, mutual confidence in the sense, you are doing nuclear and if I am uh, in my heart of hearts feel that you cannot do any harm to me, I will accept nuclear. So, 
So that has to happen. And uh, I think things have to grow. As things start growing, it will automatically fall in place. And India is desperate for more energy. And so people know what it means to have energy. Mumbai is alright, but if you go a little outside, you will find there will be power cut for hours together. You will have electricity, bulb, all installation in the house, but no electricity. Industries have to keep uh, shut for some time because of no electricity. They have rotated. Uh, some people say, I'll keep my factory closed on Sunday. Somebody will say, I'll do that on Monday. Somebody will do that on Because there is not enough power. So if you get enough power, people will want this work. So it's a question of education in that sense. Well, I think uh, the information must reach people. Whatever, you know, it cannot be that well. You take it because I'm taking it. Information must reach people. They should be able to independently check because nowadays everything is uh, available uh, on the net. And uh, at the same time engage so that, to, you know, you create that confidence or clarify any doubts that we have. There will be always some people who will never change. But not to bother. Well, I... I will repeat what I said in my lecture. See, the, the thorium energy, it's a evolving technology. Okay, today, um, we can have ideas. We can talk about concepts. But for us to deliver an actual electricity generating system, uh, except uh, LEU in uh, that is thorium LEO in PHWR or AHWR. I don't think there are too many things available today. Now, the climate change issue is, uh, is rather worrisome. And if nothing is done in the next 10, 15 years, afterwards you bring in a very great technology on thorium, the dam. question would be, would it probably pass the damage threshold? So, so it's important that, of course, we should continue development of new reactor systems using thorium, more efficient systems and all that. We should go on. And, of course, energy, as long as there is mankind, you require energy. So it is fine. But I think there is something should be given to people today. And, and so I champion a small PHWR, which is, uh, you don't have to invest too much. Is commercially competitive, safe, and uh, you run it on thorium and low enriched uranium combination of the two, uh, you can get more advantages and you will move towards thorium. And move towards thorium as a means to reduce the fear about nuclear energy, and so the share of nuclear energy goes up. That should be, and that I think should be done first.